Can this peptide called BPC-157 heal your gut and your joints? What is it, how do you utilize it, and what are some of the dosages utilized in the clinical setting? So let's get into this very important video. BPC-157 is called Body Protection Compound 157. It's basically pentadecapeptide. It's a synthetic peptide made up of 15 amino acids, and I've listed those 15 amino acids in sequence here for you. It's basically a protective protein found in human gastric juices, or basically in your stomach. It's naturally occurring. However, the synthetic version has been shown to improve a lot of different conditions. So, there have been uh, quite a number of animal studies which show tissue healing, anti-inflammatory effects, gastrointestinal protection, and neuroprotective effects. And the way it does this and the mechanisms are that it improves angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is basically developing new uh, uh, capillary beds to an injured area, okay? And it does that by stimulating VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, okay? It also upregulates growth hormone receptors, so you can actually have a heightened impact of growth hormones into that area. Also stimulates ENOS, which is endothelial nitric oxide synthase, modulates inflammation, and promotes the fibroblast. Fibroblast is basically what helps to turn over the cells and rebuild new collagen to the injured areas, okay? Human studies are very limited. There's some studies on uh, IBD and ulcerative colitis. Now, there's some cautions utilizing this peptide. BPC-157 has not been approved by the FDA for human use, okay? Also, do not use it if there is concern for cancers or tumor growth because of the angiogenesis. Basically, you're increasing vascul vasculature to a cancer area or a tumor cell. So you don't want to do that. There's also issues with quality control because it's not regulated in terms of purity. Okay? Uh, you need third-party tested you know, products. The other thing is, if it's not third-party tested, uh, third tested, there can be an increase of what we, what we call lipopolysaccharides. During the manufacturing process, lipopolysaccharides can be in the product itself. Now, Lipopolysaccharides can create inflammation if used over and over and over. So I think it's very important that you uh, utilize BPC157 uh, um, with a physician who understands this and they can give you or guarantee purity because they use a maybe a compounding facility um, to guarantee uh, purity. World Anti-Doping Agency also prohibits it, so Olympic athletes can't, cannot use it. So delivery methods, injectables, subcutaneous or intramuscular. So you can take these tiny little needles and put it into the belly fat, and you can actually have a very global effect because these peptides will travel to whatever injured areas there are. There's also oral, it's called BPC-157 and arginate salt, and those are in capsule form, and they actually have uh, multiple companies producing this in the oral capsule form. You can also use it topically for wound healing. Dosages, 500 micrograms per day, up to 5,000 micrograms. So if you're gonna use higher doses, or even if you're gonna use this, I would suggest consulting with the physician who understands this. Um, these are just kind of broad ranges of what's been used clinically or therapeutically. Typically you use five days on and two days off. So you go Monday through Friday, take Saturday, Sunday off, okay? BPC-157 also has been used with TB-500, right? These are also injectables. And used together, it tends to have a better impact on wound healing or injury healing. Also, there's been case improvements with post-COVID symptoms. So if you have long COVID or you have issues with um, COVID-related um, health issues, it may be beneficial for that. And now, again, there's no real studies on this. It's just been seen in cases and in the clinic. 
If you're going to do this, I would suggest doing a comprehensive blood uh, panel. So CBC or complete blood count, a basic metabolic panel, liver enzymes, lipid panel, inflammation markers like uh, C-reactive protein or uh, ESR. I would also do a hormone panel to see if there's an impact on hormones. I would also do creatine kinase and LDH to see if there's any muscle damage prior to doing it. So if you did a basic uh, comprehensive metabolic panel uh, and blood work before you started and then do the panel afterwards, it would give you a, a gauge of improvement or two, if there's any problems with utilizing this peptide. So it's important to do all of this. Now, there are companies uh, that are <clears throat> providing this to clients or patients uh, without a doctor's script. Okay? Now, you have to be careful of which companies you utilize. You know, I would highly suggest working with the physician in order to get the highest quality that you can get. But there are many companies uh, that make them. And there's also black market, you know, products out there. Again, the problem is purity and the contamination of lipopolysaccharides within the product itself, all right? So this is very promising in the clinical setting. There has to be a lot more human trials in order to be more um, uh, what we call common use uh, in the public, all right? My name is Dr. Jin Sung. We're a clinical excellence, meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.